Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Beat Brain Cells and the host of Between Two Minutes on OAA Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on OAA Neighborhood Television. A lot to talk about this week here on the podcast here. We got um, to recap the Oakland County meet, um, preview the state meet. Um, coming up, I know Super Saturday is nearby. Of course, it means the start of baseball and softball districts. Um, also, the um, and also lacrosse. Some quarterfinals be underway. Um, and then also um, a lot of things going around the entire league. Of course, that's what they call a Super Saturday for a reason. So, let's look at our main story here. Recapping the Oakland County meet for track and field. Um. When you look at, and also if we have time, we're going to preview, of course, the um, Wayne State. Um, Wayne State, I mean, like my early, we're going to look at some football stuff a little bit here um, as well. So we're going to look at a lot of things here. So, you know, we're going to look at track and field first, obviously, when you look at the storylines for track. Um, they had a thing called the Oakland County Meet, um, which occurred on Friday over at Oxford. Um I do apologize to the viewers saying that, um, you know, I was at Clarkston. Um, thinking about the Oakland County Middle School track meet was going to be at Clarkston, and that takes place on Thursday. Um, we're in the final week of track season, so, you know, obviously we got the state meet this weekend. So when you look at the Oakland County meet, um, you really got to look at, on the boys' side of things, um, just how important – you know, events are, and you really look at, um, you know, you really look at, you know, a team that's in the sprints, a team in the distance, and then there's the field events. Obviously, when you look at the program that Wall Lake Central has built, um, now Wall Lake Central's in the Lakes Valley. Um, so what they did, especially in the discus event, um, they ended up winning the meet, um, winning the boys' side of the county meet, they put up 60, 63 points, holding off Troy Athens, who was second with 49. Troy was third at 46 in, in, in three quarters. Oak Park was fourth with 43. And Adams was fifth with them, 38. Um, Wall Lake Northern was sixth with 32. Lake Orient, seventh with 31. Pontiac Northern Preparatory was eighth with 30 points. Wall Lake Western was... um. Ninth with 29 points, and North Farmington rounded out the top 10 um, in the county with 27 points. So when you really look at the difference for Wall Lake Central winning the, winning the state title, no, the county title, you really got to look at the field events. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at Wall Lake Central, they took the top three places. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at a meet like that, that's 24 of your 69 points. Based on the discus. I mean, the discus event was just absolutely insane. Um, Bryson Anderson of Wall Lake Central threw 188. Um, Tyler Margary threw 167.10. Nathan Cody threw, um, took third through 165.8. Um, and that's first, second, and third right there. That's 24 points right there. Um, and then you look at fourth place is, um, Ray Ikoa of Groves um, threw 164.7. Um, Liam Vaughn of Wall Lake Western, fifth with 161.7. Um, Andre Newman of Lakeland was sixth with 159.8. Uh, Matthew Guerin was seventh with 159.8.5. And then Jaden Barrero of Lake Orion was eighth with 155.10. And Gerard Alexander of Wall Lake Central um, missed out on the um, top eight. But he threw 153.6, and he's only a junior. And that kind of tells you how scary the throwing program at Wald Lake Central is. I mean, like, it's insane. I mean, you really look at a lot of these marks. I mean, the top, I mean, throwing, like, my goodness, 120 would have got you 26. That says something right there. That was how crazy and how insane that meet was. I mean, in Wall Lake Central's case, they put up 24 points in the discus. And then the shot, um, Wall Lake Central got second, third, and sixth, which is which is like um 
which is um you know 17 points right there so when you really look at the combined point totals 24 and 17 um that's 41 of their 69 points for wall lake central was based on the throws and that's insane i mean that is just absolutely insane that two events would do that and especially for a team like wall lake central um, and they were in it. Um, Tyler Marguerite of Wall Lake Central was second with 57.6. Lost to Andre Newman of Lakeland by two inches. I mean, the kid from Lakeland threw 57.8. Um, Bryson Anderson was third with 55.1 and a half. Um, Liam Vaughn was fourth with 54.5 and three quarters. Um, you know, and, and then... Sixth place and then eighth place out of the whole list was 50 feet five. Um, that was Gerard Alexander Wall Lake Central. So, technically, take that back. Um, you know, I did say 17 points. I mean, they got you know, then you add 18 points into that fold. So, you know, so you know, so 24 and 18 that's almost like 40 of your 69 right there, and that says something right there. Um, and the top eight places through 40, um, through 50 feet, five inches. I mean, and then Wall Lake Central Dylan Akers, he threw 48.4 and a quarter of an inch. I mean, that, that kind of tells you, that describes basically the dominance of Wall Lake Central in the throws. I mean, like, their shot put in discus. I mean, like, my goodness. I mean, you really look at, you know, their throwing program, one of the best in the state for a reason. But then also, you got to wonder with some of those kids, do they do other sports? I mean, do they do like, you know, football? Obviously, you look at, um, I know Wall Lake Central lately has not been very good lately in football. But you got to wonder, what are these kids doing over there at Wall Lake Central? Are they, you know what I mean? You know, they have one of the best throws programs in the entire, um, in the entire county. I mean, they're one of the best throwing programs in the state for a reason. Um, so they, you know that they're doing a lot of stuff over there. And, you know, obviously when you look at from the, the OA representation, um, you know, Amari Harrison took seventh from Groves with the 51.6 and a half. Um, really was the only OA, OA thrower who scored points. Um, and that was Groves, and we knew how good Groves has been all year long. Um, Spencer Beekman of Stony Creek through 44-11. Um, not a great day for him, but he's going to states, um, especially after taking second place in the um, in the regional over at um, Rochester. He threw, he threw 50 feet. Um, and he's going to be back next year for Stony Creek. Um Patrick Wyden took 13th through 42 feet, eight and a half. Um, Benjamin Akron of Clarkson coming back next year through 42 eight. Um, Kane DeGreffenry Lake Orion was in the top 15 through 42 feet, seven and a half. Wayne McPherson was 16th with 42 six. Nick Machensko of Clarkston was 17th with 42 six. Um, and that rounded out the top 20. So this meet really telling the boys' side. Just the dominance of Wall Lake Central, especially in the throws, um, especially when you look at what happened in the regional last year, um, when Wall Lake Central, behind their throwing, their throwing presence, um, went off and put up a ton of points. And you really got to look at it and say, okay, um, you know. And I think at the end of the day, you got to give them a lot of credit. And Wall Lake. Um, Central, you know, they found a way to win and, you know, and, you know, and they won that regional against a very good Athens team who's been, who I really thought this year Athens really, I mean, overperformed. I mean, with the, I mean, like they won their regional at Romeo, which I didn't expect. Um, Troy, of course, you know, had a nice showing through 40, I mean, performed, took third with 46, seven and a half. I mean, Oak Park was fourth with 43 points. Um, Adams was fifth. Now, Adams, to me, I was really surprised with in the regional that they really struggled um, in this meet. I mean, I really think with Adams, um, 
they kind of really, really struggled with, you know what I mean? Like, um, the, the balance. Um, now I was really surprised they put 38 points up. I mean, I thought Adams would scored maybe more points in this meet, but unfortunately, you know, that didn't happen. And, you know, at the end of the day here, the difference was, while well, like, the difference was, um, you know, Adams just couldn't. They had to survive against Wild Lake Northern and Lake Orion. Um, Notre Dame Prep was in there. Wild Lake Westman was in there. Um, so really credit where credit's due um, with them. So, yeah, the Warriors, you know what I mean? The um, Yeah, the Highlanders were just, it was shocking to see how they struggled in that meet considering, you know, this is a team that won the red this year, um, looked really good, had to survive Troy in the regional. Um, but you know, give credit where credit's due. Um, especially the other other teams are Troy, Athens, Troy. Um, now it was shocking to me that Athens not uh, uh, either. I could think of with Adams was maybe they're gearing up for the state meet um this weekend, and I think some of these teams are gearing up for that. I mean, Oak Park has got a habit of it. Um, they're one of the favorites in the state. Um, to repeat as state champions in track and field. Um, we're going to talk them in a minute with the girls. Um, but you got to get credit where credit's due with Troy, Athens, and Troy. Um, you know, Athens, obviously, their mid distance has been very good all year long. Um, they found just enough distance, enough sprints to, um, to score. Um, Troy, um, we, Troy's been like a really odd team, and they've been a really, Really odd team, and I think with them, um, with Troy, and I just think with the Colts, um, just really, you know, I mean they, I mean they've been up and down all year long, and you know you gotta get credit where credit's due. Um, Troy, I mean Troy had a really unique year. I mean they won the white, um, hung in there, a took Adams to the end, and. You know, you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, you know, I mean, but it is what it is. So give credit where credit's due. Um, for, with Troy Athens, uh, with Troy, um, I was really impressed with Troy this year. Really was. I mean, didn't expect them to have a big year like they did. Um, credit where credit's due with them. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, Lake Orion was in the top 10, um, 31 points. Um, you know, Dragons were young were a young team this year for Coach Andrew McDonald. Um, you know, so they got some pieces coming back. North Farms around up the top ten with twenty seven points. Um, other OA schools um in the um top in the top in the county, of course, Rose was twelfth with twenty four and three quarters. Farmington was thirteenth with twenty four. Um, Royal Oak was tied for sixteenth with twenty points. Um, Clarkson was eighteenth with eighteen points. West Bloomfield, I was really surprised with them here. Um, only scored 11 points. Um, did not see that one coming, though, with the Lakers. I really did not expect to see the Lakers really just get, um, only score 11 points. That was stunning, to say the least. I mean, like, you know, I was really surprised there. Um, that they always scored 11 points. Bloomfield Hills was 21st with nine, with, um, with 10 points. Um, Rochester was tied for 26th with a and and Oxford with six points each. Berkeley was 30th with three points. Um, Ferndale was 32nd with, um, tied for 32nd with South Lion with two points. Um, Avondale was 34th with one point, and Stony Creek had three quarters of a point, rounding out the top 35 scoring teams around the OA, so around Oakland County, so... That's my take on the boys here. Now let's go to the girls here. Um, Oak Park, you know, you got to look at with them. Um, their sprints, their sprints says a lot. I mean, their, hurdle, their hurdles and their relays says a lot. Um, you know, especially taking like first, second, and sixth in the final. Um, behind Morgan Roundtree. I mean, I've heard a lot about Roundtree all year with Oak Park. Carrie Van Noy, um, she, she ran 1463. Morgan Roundtree, 1435. Um, 
and Jada Watson, um, fifteen sixty two. Now, Van Noy and Watson are both juniors, and that says a lot right there um, with Oak Park. Um, you know, scoring like um, eighteen, and then of course taking six, and you know. You know, and that's four points right there. That's twenty points right there, just off the one hundred, just off the one hundred hurdles, the three hundred hurdles. You know what I mean? They took first, third, and sixth. So basically, that is um, basically that is twenty points right there. So they got twenty points, awesome. The three hundred and the three hundred hurdles as well. I mean, and then in the relays. I mean, obviously you look at of course the four by two. Um, no, actually, you know, take that back, you know, and then, also, you know, this is the hurdle relays. The hurdles were the difference here for Oak Park. And, you know, you look at, um, and I'm looking at the website here right now. I mean, like, obviously, you know, the, um, you're looking at the, um, relays and all that. O Oak Park really did not score much in the relays, um, as I thought they would. Um, they were second the four by two. Um, they were second in the four by two. Oh, wait, I, oh, I take that back. I was looking at the wrong relay. <laughs> um, you know, and I think, you know, when you look at Oak Park, the story for them has to be the hurdle relay. Um, and I'm looking at, I'm looking at the standings right now here. And I, and I think really, you know, obviously Oak Park won the four by one with, of course, Van Noy, Roundtree, Watson, and, um, Kelsey Hunter Young, 4751. They won the four by one. Um the four by four. Um, they won that behind um Kellis Hunter Young, Deshauna Kellogg, Kylie King, and Nevaeh Burns. I mean, I've heard a lot about I've heard a lot about um Kylie King um in the distance events. Um and I really think when you look at it here, of course, um you know, I think when it, it comes down to is Oak Park what they were dominant in more of. It looked like to me they were dominant in the mid distance. Um basically, um, because you knew that because you knew coming in, I mean like you knew coming I mean, Kylie King was first in the eight hundred. I mean, she ran a two ten sixty four, which is just absolutely insane. Um and then Jordan Maddox Jones, only a sophomore took seventh with 220.72 that's insane i mean that is just absolutely insane um that coach giles finds a way to get points you know what i mean in these situations i mean you look in the 400 i mean nevaeh burns only a freshman um was first um with 55.32 um deshauna kellogg was second with 56.55 um and Kill and Killis Hunter Young was fourth with fifty seven thirty. If you think about it, that is almost like that is almost twenty three points is right in that event. So you really look at what Oak Park did. It was the relays, the hurdles, and the mid distance ended up being the difference for Oak Park. Um, and they were dominant. I mean, they were really. Really dominant. Um, when you look at the standings, I mean, in the girls' side of the county, you I mean Rochester was third with forty six points. I mean, like with forty nine points. I mean, like we know how good their distance has been. I mean, obviously, you know, Lucy Cook and also their four by eight's been one of the best in the state all year long. Um, and then I'm looking at top top. I mean, Oak Park won at one ten. Wall Lake Northern was second with sixty seven points. Um, Rochester was third with 49 points. Um, Novi fourth with 46. Lake Orion was fifth with 42 and a half. Um, Clarkson was sixth with 41 points. Ferndale was seventh with 39 points. Farmington was eighth with 23 points. Troy Athens was ninth with, um, 21 points. And Farmington's Mercy was tenth, running out the top 10 with 20.5. So, you really look at the storylines of that meet, um... Kind of the story had to come down to is can um you know Oak Park showed why they're one of the favorites of the state to repeat as state champions and they did 
<laughs> they showed what they did in the regional. Um, you know, when they were, I was shocked how they beat Rochester. Just, I'll be honest with you, I thought Rochester was coming in here as the favorite. I really thought, honestly, that Rochester would have been the favorite um, to win this regional for several reasons. Because you really look at, um, you know, you really look at the um, the dominance of, um, you know, Rochester's, they're the red champions. Um, they, they ended up winning the um, red meet, even though that was really close. Um, you know, they won the league meet. And then the regional, I was really surprised that, you know, their distance play performed really well. But it was more of the distance with Oak, the difference with, with Oak Park. Um, and Oak Park is one of those teams that's, you know, they're, they're a very good team. They are very good. I mean, don't get me wrong. They are a very, very good team. And they performed really well. They performed um, to the expectation of level um, that not a lot of people have seen before. And that's a credit to where credit's due for the Knights. And I really think Oak Park really showed, you know, Oak Park, there's a reason why that they're one of the favorites in the um for the state meet, and I think it's because of hurdles. But Rochester, they're gonna have a huge say, maybe, and I think a lot of that's a distance, um, especially with Lucy Cook. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, Lake Orion fifth with forty two point five. Um, let's not forget this Dragon team won the freshman county meet. Um, so Lake Orion. You look at that team, and Coach Andrew McDonald is building something at Lake Orion. And you look at that freshman class, and I talked more about this class last week. You know, obviously, when you combine the three middle schools in Lake Orion, which is Scripps, Walden, and Oakview, um, all three well-coached um, with Devin Meadows, um, Debbie McDonald, and um, John Blackstock. Um you look at this Lake Orion team and they've got some proven players. They got some proven runners um, and they're stepping up right now in some big roles. And you really look at this dragon team, you know, and just imagine how they're going to be the next few years. Now, could it be the team that rivals that of the 2012 team? Now that, that team in 2012 was something. I mean, under, under legendary coach Shan Ford. I mean, that team was something. I mean, really, really, really good. I mean, that track, I mean, like, that team was really good. I still remember when I officiated the throws and I said, um, you know, I was, after the meet, I was talking to Coach Ford and he says, I got way too much depth. You know what I mean? And they're scoring. You know what I mean? I mean, I can bet, I can rest guys and they're, and they're, and they're scoring. They're, they're scoring in other ways. That tells you something right there. I remember that team real well and that team ended up going on winning a state championship. In Division One, so it'll be interesting to see um, how the girls do um, next year. Um, but I think for the next three years, this um, Lake Orion girls track and field team—they're going to be something. They're going to be something to watch. So we'll see what happens with them. I mean, we will see what happens with them. Um, Clarkston taking six. Um, you know, when I look at Clarkston, um, you know, obviously with them, um, you know, they, they've had a nice year. They got some young pieces over there at Clarkston. Um, they've gotten some some girls to stay at Clarkston, I mean, to stay on the in the track program over there. Um, so it kind of, like, says, you know, for, um, for them, um, you know, they're getting back in the thick of it. Um, you know, like, I, I remember the Clarksons of the past when they were really good in track. Um, you know, then they had they had some down years, and I think they're starting to get back in the thick of it. Um, so when I look at Clarkston um, in the future, I think they're going to be something. I mean, they're going to be scary. Um, they got the thrower coming um, over at Sashville right now, and, um, you know, and I, and, 
And I think, you know, I mean, they got a, a thrower coming up. Who's that Satchmo right now? He's got one more year. Um, going to be at Clarkson Junior High. Um, and then wait till she gets there. She's going to be a very scary thrower for them. Um, so, and then you look at with them, I mean, they got some sprints. They got some distance. Um, obviously, they, they're they well coached under with the Clarkson, with Clarkson Junior High, with the 8th grade, and then Satchmo Middle School for 6th and 7th grade. So, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, but they had a nice showing at the county meet. Um, sixth place of 41 points. Ferndale had a nice showing with 39 points. Um, obviously, they ran the Birmingham and Detroit Country Day in the regional, um, which was going to be very difficult for them. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how, um, you know, how Ferndale goes, develops their talent. Um, they got the sprints for sure. They got the relays for sure. But they've got to address the field events and they got to address distance. And I think that's going to be the challenge for Coach Juan Rickman is can they address the distance? I mean, that's really going to be the key for them going forward. And I think that's going to be something to really, really watch for for Ferndale going forward is can they address their distance? I mean, can they address the field events? I mean, if you're a team that relies just solely on sprints, that's not going to end well. And I think really that's really where it is with, um, you know, with Pony, with, um, with Ferndale. And I think that's going to be the key for them going forward is can they handle, you know, as can they build the distance and can they build the relays? I mean, like you just cannot be a full fledged sprint team because, you know, that usually doesn't always work, you know, and obviously people are going to say, well, with the Oak Park model that works. I mean, like, here's the thing, Oak Park, with their model, they rely, they load up the hurdle events, they load up the sprint, the relays, and they load up some sprint events and some mid distance events. They load those up, and that's why they get their points there. Um, you can't necessarily do it in the, with the sprints, considering, you know, I mean, but you got to be more balanced. And I think for Ferndale, that's going to be the key for them going forward is can they balance out, you know what I mean? Their depth, can they balance it out? And I think that's going to be the key for them. They got to build more depth, and I also think they got to build more balance. And I think that's going to be the key for them going forward. Um, Farmington had a nice showing, eighth place with them, um, twenty-three points. Um, Farmington, obviously, their distance has been very good all year long. Um, the throwing program's been solid. Um, you know, they had a nice showing there. They they really had a nice showing there at the county. Um, but like I said, I mean. Like I said, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what they do next year. Um, we'll see what happens to them. Um, Troy Athens was ninth with 21 points. Really surprised with um, with the Red Hawks, the performance that they've had. Um, you know, I, I think with them, I mean, taking ninth in the county meet, nice showing for them. Had a really good showing. Um, other OA schools, um, Stony Creek was 11th with 19 points. Um you know, they were about two points from getting in the top 10. Actually, a point and a half being top 10. Um, I think they were very young this year, so we'll see what happens with them going forward there. Um, Troy was a surprise for me. Cause I cause they were tied for 14th with Lake well, with, with Lakeland with 14 points. Um This was a surprise. Because Troy this year, I know their girls have been solid all year. I mean, they've been very, very good, very talented. Um, but I didn't expect with them was, I thought Troy would, you know what I mean? I thought Troy would do better in this meet. But I was kind of surprised that they were tied to 14th. Um, you know, I, I really thought that, you know, they could have done better here in this meet. I really thought that they could, but unfortunately it never materialized. So. We'll see how that one goes. I mean, for next year, Troy, they should be back in the conversation next year. Um, Royal Oak was tied for 16 with Bloomfield Hills um, with 13 points each. Um, Royal Oak, you know, the dis their distance power, obviously. Sprints is still a question mark for them. Um, field events, you know, they got a very good thrower um, who's going to be heading to states. So I think for them, they're going to be solid next year. I mean, they got. I mean, they got some throwers. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, to go along with that distance, I think they're going to be solid next year. So we'll see what happens with them going forward here. 
Um, Blue Bay Hills, 13 points. They got, as I mentioned, Sprints has been solid all year long. Um, they're going to be fine um, in the future. I think they're going to be okay. Um, I think I'll make some noise next year. Um, we'll see what happens with them going forward there. Um, Adams and Oxford are tied for 18th with 12 points each. Um, Adams, I know in the girls, they were a little bit down this year. Oxford, I kind of was very surprised with them this year because, yeah, they were young. I mean, they got a very good promising throw on Tegan O'Connor coming back. Um, Adams was down this year. Um, they kind of really want to think about with them. Uh, I think they're going to be okay. I mean, I think Adams, they had a year of experience, um, took their lumps, and I think they're going to be okay. I really do. But Adams and Oxford tied for 18th, respectively, with 12 points each. Um, Groves was 21st with with um, nine points. Um, you know, I think Groves, they're going to be solid next year. Um, North Farmington was... Um, 20, tied for 29th with Seaholm with three points each. Now, Seaholm's distance I was really surprised with. Um, you know, I mean, like, because I thought Seaholm would score more in the distance events. They only scored three points in the county. Um, North Farmington scoring three points, kind of a little bit of a surprise for me there. Um, so, just really surprised that those two teams did not score. Um, Chunks of points. I'm just really surprised that they were tw tied for 29th with only scoring three points. Now, some teams I was really surprised with. Now, West Bloomfield didn't even didn't even score in this meet. I mean, they didn't even score. And you look at West Bloomfield, they have a really good sprint. I mean, like, their relays are very good. They have a really good relay. They have a really good relay in Cameron Tatum. I mean, like, um, in Tatum, um, really surprised with, um, Really surprised that West Bloomfield did not score, or they didn't even bring their best their best throw or best kids in there. Um, this maybe getting ready for the state meet. So really surprised that West Bloomfield. Um, you know they didn't they didn't um go out and um they didn't go and compete um in the girls side. I mean the boys side they put up you know eleven points, but the girls they didn't score at all unless they're probably thinking more of the state meet. So that could be an, a reason for Coach Zach Hilbers um, that I was surprised they did not score in that meet. And then the other team that surprised me was Birmingham and Detroit Country Day. I mean, you look at what Detroit Country Day did in the regional. I mean, they were dominant. I mean, they they were they were dominant. And all of a sudden, like you know, you look at what Ferndale did, um, you know, against Ferndale. I mean, like. Fern and the Ferndale actually was better than they were in the county meet. And, you know, and then we look at the regional Detroit Country Day, they knocked off Ferndale. So it was really a surprise um, to see Detroit Country Day only score seven points. Um, virtually tied for 24th with Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Of course, Orchard Lake St. Mary's just recently, um, you know, just recently, you know, became, an, I mean, like brought in some girls, you know what I mean, to, um, you know, to compete and, you know, and you really look at what the success of St. Mary's and the girls side of sports have done. I mean, girls basketball, they went to the regional, um, like regional final. Um, I mean, under coach Brad Crichton. Um, and then you look at, you know, they've done really, really well on the girls side of things. So Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you know, you look at them and say they're an all boys school. I mean, like, well, they're now, they're now, um, they now got girls in there as well. So now, you know, I'll be very curious to see what the MHA does with Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, do they move them up to D1? Do they move them, you know, do they um, put them with the boys? I mean, so there's just a lot of questions I have with Orchard Lake St. Mary's going forward. Um, so we'll see how that one goes with them. Um, but definitely, you know, on the track side of things, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, 24th in the county, tied for 24th. But Birmingham Detroit Country Day, um, pretty impressive. So, just actually pretty impressive. So, we'll see what happens. Um, previewing the state meet this weekend, obviously, Oak Park has to be the favorite on the girls' side. Um, I really think with the Knights, um, if they can get, I mean, Detroit Renaissance will score their, will score some points in the 
in the sprints. I mean, they'll, they'll get their fair share of points. Um, it could be a battle, but also East Kentwood could be a team to really watch for as well um, on the girls' side. But if you, you got to give an early edge to Oak Park because of how they can load up the hurdle events, how they can load up relays, um, and also how um, they can get just enough points um, in other events that could really help them in that um, scenario when they go, I mean, like, in that scenario. So, Division One, the Division One state meet will be at um, East Kentwood. Um, Division Two, I mean, now uh, when you look at track and field, I mean, like all these event, all these state meets are going to be west of Lansing. So, really, you know, when you look at the division, um, the Division Two meet will be over at um, like Division One this year will be at East Kentwood. And Division Two will be at um, and Division Two would be over at um Hamilton High School, at um Hawkeye Stadium. So that'll be very interesting there. I mean, like I think Detroit Country Day's got a great chance to win it. Um, Ferndale Harper Woods. Um, I mean, I mean Ferndale University are in that, um, are in Division 2 for track and field, and Pontiac is also in Division 2, so we'll see how that one goes. I mean, we'll see how that one goes, but Division 2 will be taking place over at, um, over at, um, at Hamilton High School, um, and then Division 1 will be at East Kentwood High School, so East Kentwood, we know, has got a really huge facility. Hamilton, I don't know much about you know, do they got a big field, a big track? Um, obviously, when you look at with Hamilton, um, and I'm looking at the um, projections for the for Division Two, and I think they're really interesting. Um, I think when you look at Detroit Country Day, you gotta you gotta put them in that conversation, um, and then you know they got a chance to do well. Um, Emily City, Holland, Marshall. I mean, like they got. I mean, they're, they're they got some chances. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, like I'm curious to see how um how these will go. Um, how these will go. I mean, like so we'll see how it goes. I mean, I think it'll be very interesting. Division two, division one. It's gonna be interesting here too. Um, on the boys side, obviously, you know, you got Frank and Moose has to be favored. 59, I mean, like, Frank and Move Parma Western's in this conversation. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, we will see how it goes. I mean, Division 2, it should be really interesting over at Hamilton um, this weekend. And then on the boys' side, I mean, you know, boys' side, you know, I think it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. And then on the girls' side, and on the boys' side, in Division 1 East Count 1, as I mentioned earlier, um, that could be a really tight meet. Um, that could be a really, really tight meet. So it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. So we'll see how it goes. So I think it'll be really, really interesting to see how it would go. And I think it'll be really interesting to see how um how it will go. So we'll see how it goes. So all right, we're going to go now from track and field. Um, we're going to preview, obviously. I've already talked enough baseball, softball districts, obviously. Uh, I know the Oakland Press has really started to release their projections. Um, <laughs> pretty close to mine in the baseball side of things. Um, I know we don't agree on Birmingham, Burla Rice, and West Bloomfield, which I kind of expected that would be the case. Um, and then... And then, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes, um, the baseball districts go. Um, lacrosse, obviously, when you're looking at the um, lacrosse regionals, um, you know, we're still in the um, we're still in the thick of it here. Um, they're already in the finals um, for lacrosse um, for several teams here. So I'm looking at them right now here. Um, you know, so bear with me here. Um, I know Lake Orion's taking on Port Huron in region number, um, I mean, Heartland Grand Blank will be very interesting in that regional over there at, um, over at, um, 
You know, re, I mean, Heartland taking on Grand Blank. I mean, could you just imagine Lake Orion Heartland? That could be really interesting. Clarkston taking on Troy. Um, you know, Troy's Troy's been a team that's really been. They're the three seed. Um, they knocked off Stony Creek eleven to nine, which was really shocking. I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> um, in that regional. Um. In that semifinal, Clarkson, he kind of expected they would be there. Um, they had no problem with um, Romeo. Um, Romeo knocked off Rochester 7-4, to but then, Ro then Clarkson just went and just blew out um, Romeo 20-8. to um, So Clarkson, Troy would be very interesting. I still think Clarkson will win that pretty handily. Um, Lake Orion will take on um, Port Huron. Port Huron's coming off a dominating win against Chippewa Valley. Uh, we're down against the Wapoinka Bay. Um, this will be the toughest task yet against Lake Orion um, at their home field. Lake Orion's looked really good. Um, knocked off Macomb, Dakota, 11-2. Um, and, I, and I know the Dragons, their coach Ron Herbert, done a really good job with that team. Um, so it'll be a really tall order um, for... Um, for Port Huron to take on the Dragons. So it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Birmingham Brother Rice takes on Birmingham United. Um, Birmingham coming out two dominant wins. Brother Rice, you know what I mean? They just came off a win against Royal Oak 21 to 23-3. Um, I mean, Bloomby, I mean, Royal Oak shocked Bloomby Hills 8-7 earlier, which was shocking. Um, Farmington, of course, losing the Vonnie Stevenson 13-6. Um, but Birmingham United against Birmingham Brother Rice, um, that should be a really interesting matchup there, but I just think Brother Rice will be too much. Um, and then the, um, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes here, um, over there. So I'm looking at the other matchups here, uh, Division 2, see if there's any OA teams that are in, um, uh, with Division 2. It doesn't look like there are any. Um, OA teams that are in Division Two. Um, Adams obviously losing the Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory, um, sixteen to eleven. Um, and other than that, everything else looks like it's set in stone. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. Um, you know, but I I think Lake Orion and Clarkson are going to be the two teams that are really I think Lake Orion and Clarkson are the two teams that are really going to be the ones that are going to be scary um, that I think could do really well in the um, regional finals. I think, I think both those teams are going to move on. Um, and Clarkson's most likely going to see Birmingham Brother Rice in the quarterfinals with Lake Orion would likely have a rematch with Heartland. So that'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Um, on the girls' side, they're still in the... Um, Regional and the, I mean, like, you look at the matchups. Troy takes on Birmingham United. That should be really interesting. And then Bloomfield Hills takes on Utica Eisenhower. Um, I think Bloomfield Hills will get to the final. I think Troy and Birmingham United, that's going to be a really tight game between those two teams. Um, Troy has been really knocking off. Troy's been solid all year. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes, so... But I think Troy Birmingham and Birmingham will be a really good game over at West Bloomfield. Um, and then you have Bro Bloom and then you have Bloomby Hills taking on Eisenhower. So that'd be really interesting there in that one. Um and then you look at um the regional over at Grand Blank. Um you look at um Heartland and Grand Blank, and then Lake Orion versus um versus White versus White Lake and you know, versus Huron Valley, um, which is going to be interesting. I mean, Lake Orion and Huron Valley. Um, Lake Orion should win that one against Huron Valley. I mean, like, I know they laid a whooping on ho on um, Howell. Um, and then Heartland Grand Blank is going to be a really interesting matchup. I think Heartland will win that one. So, to me, in that regional on the girls' side, I think it's going to come down to is Ken. You know, we're looking at that matchup most likely between Lake Orion and Heartland. Um, in the um regional final, which should be really interesting. See how that one goes. 
Um, and then to Region 2, and then to Division 2. Um, obviously, when you look at Division 2, um, you got Adams had no issue with Utica Ford. So you got the Birmingham Detroit Country Day versus Stony Creek, which that should be really interesting. Um, and then Birmingham Marion versus um, Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory. So I think this could be a really, really interesting matchup. I mean, really surprised Detroit Country Day, the way they, what they did to Boom Bales, Cranbrook, Kingswood. Um, Birmingham Marion knocked off um, Bloopy Hills Academy. And then um, Notre Dame Preparatory had to survive Rochester Adams in overtime 13-12. to 12. So... Like I said, this would be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, and then North Farmington, Farmington both knocked out. Um, North Farmington lost to um. They lost to Celine twenty to four, and then um, Farmington lost a heartbreaker to Dexter fourteen twelve. So somewhere Ian Locke would be really happy because I know he's a big he's a Dexter dreadnought alumni. So. You know, I know he's going to be really happy. Um, but it, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, like, you know, when you look at Division Two, I mean, Stony Creek's got a really tall order ahead of him against Detroit Country Day. Um, and then you look at, um, and then you look at, um, and then, of course, in, the, uh, in Division One, you know, you got Lake Ori and Heartland most likely going to see each other in the um, quarter, in the um, regional final. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see. Um, Bloomfield Hills, best draw out of the um, bunch there. I think Troy and Birmingham unite is going to be a really, really tight game, um, between the Colts and the Bulldogs. Um, I know Troy beat him earlier in the year. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes in, in lacrosse. So. We'll see how that one goes, and I think it'll be really interesting to see how things go over there between those two teams. So we'll see what happens in the regional for lacrosse um, coming up. Um, obviously, we got in the big part of Saturday, we got the state. Um, we got I think we got golf coming up as well. I mean, like we got the um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. And I think at the end of the day here, um, you know, I think for lacrosse, it's going to come down to is, you know, obviously the team that I think can make the most noise, does Lake Orion have a chance against Heartland? Um, that's a question that I don't know. And, We'll see how that one goes, and I think it'll be really interesting to see how um how that one goes, and I think that'll be interesting to see. I mean, I know we got I know we got soccer districts coming up. Um, we've got, I mean, like we 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 got the regional final for lacrosse. We got um, so it'll be interesting to see. I mean, obviously the big part of it is Saturday. Um, I've already talked to districts. I mean, we got ten. We got we got um i mean it it it's a big big weekend and it'll be interesting to see how things go and it'll be interesting to see how things will go i mean obviously we talked last week if you want i mean like make sure you watch last week's podcast um i do a pretty good job people in the soccer districts um also um pre a little bit of the baseball softball regionals. Now, the only regional I did not get was Harper Woods' regional for district for softball. So, when I look at, I'm trying to see if Harper Woods did post their, um, did post their districts, um, for softball, um, because, you know, there's supposed to be a specific deadline where they can do it, and it'll be interesting because I know that they've had the host needed for a couple weeks now. It looks like they did do the matchups, and Harper Woods is hosting. Um, so I will I will update that on the blog at second by forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. Um, it looks like Detroit East English Village Prep is going to take on Harper Woods. 
Um, Detroit to NB Tech League taking on Detroit Southeastern. Um, so when I look at this, um, this district here over there, so I didn't talk much about the other. I mean, like I didn't talk much about this district here. So I think when I and I still say Harper Woods is the favorite because of the schedule they played, but also home field now matters because you know you really look at now with District Fifty Six Harper Woods now hosting. That's a big deal because, you know, you look at what the Pioneers have done um, ever since being in the OAA. I think it's really benefited their sports programs um, being in the league. Um, now, you know, obviously you look at the Division Four state championship in football. Um, I've talked with Coach Olden. Um, with Coach Olden. Um you know, football, obviously, we know about the Division Four State Championship. Um, you know, so I'll be starting to talk to the um, to all the OA football coaches in the next um, couple of weeks, um, seeing how everybody's been doing. Um, but now with school starting to come out, um, starting to be let out, um, you know, you kind of like, you kind of want to think about, you know what I mean? There's going to be a lot of people going to think about football um coming up and I think you know and I think a lot of people are gonna get excited for football coming up. I mean you see these players going to different camps. I mean like this to get themselves no I mean out there and all that. Um it'll be interesting to see how, you know, those camps translate to success and vice versa. I mean like there's a lot of questions when I look at how does talent translate to success right away i mean like as i mentioned a couple weeks ago i mentioned for football i um did my early top 10 um you know not my official rankings for the top 10 but i think when i look at when i look at football right now you know what i mean i know i've been a lot of people i know i get a lot of it on social media that i haven't said much about football because i've been so busy talking about spring sports and you know, and, and spring sports deserve their attention as well. And also with winter sports as well. So, you know, so, but when you look at football right now, I would have to say right now, my early top team has to be Harper Woods. I mean, considering they just won the Division Four State Championship last year. You return a quarterback in Nate Washlow. Um, he's going to get the bulk of the time now with Spencer Buford moving on um, to college. Um, you have a good, great running back in Kobe Taylor. Um, Dakota Gary, I think is going to have, going to be ready to take on next level. Um, the line's a question mark for me with Harper Woods, um, which I think it'll be very interesting to see how coach Odin, um, re reloads that reloads up front defensively. I think I can't go against coach Odin and defensively. Um, he, he, I, I consider him one of the most um, tactical minds in the game when it comes to defense. Um, and I really like where Harper Woods is at um, when it comes to where, um, you know, they've been battle-tested, playing in the OA, really. Um, but Harper Woods, to me, right now, they're no doubt my, they're no doubt going to be the favorite in the white. Um, but, you know, obviously people at Groves are going to probably disagree with me there, but I just think that Harper Woods, with the, with, uh, with the experience they got back, I'm really, I really like where this Pioneer team's at. Um, even though their schedule is going to be interesting, because I think they got to go to Groves this year. Um, but Harper Woods right now would be my top team right now in the league, um, considering who they got back. Um, number two, I still would say is Lake Orion. Um, you know, they returned T.R. Hill, um, Jackie Vasquez at running back. Watch for a guy named Jaden Barrero. He's going to be a load at running back for Coach Chris Bell. They got line play. Brendan Eliasson up front. Defense will be interesting to watch. Um, but I think the Dragons could be a team that, you know, anytime we turn to starting quarterback, says a lot right there. Wide receivers, a little interesting to watch. Um, so that'll be a question mark for me when I look at the Dragons is wide receiver. Um, so... Lake Orange, a team to really watch for this season. Um, number three, West Bloomfield. I just think the Lakers right now. Um, I think the Lakers could be, I mean, the Lakers have added a couple transfers in there. Question for me is, are they going to 
you know, how are they going to handle the transition period that's going to have to happen during the year? Um, I think the Lakers, um, they could, they could be back to where their own selves is. They could be really back, but I don't like their secondary right now. I think there's some concerns there. Um, there's some question marks there at the secondary. I know Jamal Shakespeare. I'm high on him. Um, he's a, he's, he's very athletic. So we'll see, but I got West Moonby right now at three. Adams, I got number four. I mean, I really, even, anytime I turn the quarterback, Ryan Waters coming back, I think he's going to be very, very good. Um, I'm really, I think it, it was a down year for Adams. I think they're going to be in line for a bounce back year. Um, really, really high on this Adams team. So we'll see what happens to them. And then my number five team here, um, to round up my top five, um, I really like Clarkston. Um, Clarkson does return their quarterback. Um, they got the Bowman Twins. Um, defense is still a concern for me. Um, I, I just don't know how Clarkson's going to be defensively. There's just a lot of questions. Schedule is brutal. Um, open up with Belleville. So that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, my sixth ranked team right now, I would say, is, is Groves is six. With all that experience coming back, there's some questions I have for Coach Flaherty's team. I have Oxford at seven. Um, Oxford, their schedule is just, they got a lot back. I mean, like, I really like Luke John. I really like Johnson at running back. Um, they got a very good quarterback in Jack Hendricks. Um, but their schedule is just so brutal. I mean, like, I mean, their schedule is absolutely brutal. I mean, open up with you guys, however. Got to close out the year with Macomb, Dakota. I mean, that's just brutal. Really brutal. I got Avenue at eight. Um, they got everybody back except the quarterback. Um, you know, they lose Herzog. Who's going to be the QB? It's a big question mark for Coach um, for Avondale. Um, a lot of questions there. Farmington at nine. A lot of talent coming back there for them. Um, and then my number 10 team. Um, my number 10 team have been kind of really torn on this. Um, but I would have to say, um, you know, right now I would have to say my number 10 team, like I just got nine teams right now for sure right now. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we will see. Um, but I got nine teams for sure, but my 10 team, I'm still trying to figure that out right now. But those are my early, early, early season top. Oh, I should take that back. Um, number 10, I got is Ferndale. I mean. Ferndale, Colin Hawk at quarterback. A um, lot of questions, though, for the Eagles. I thought they had a – I was really surprised they struggled last year. Um, so, I think they're due for a bounce back year. So, we'll see what Coach Eric Royal has going forward. So, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at 2nd at blogspot.com. We're keeping on the basketball situations over at Sea Home Troy Athens for the boys. Groves and Bloompy Hills for the girls. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Everybody right, signing off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care and I'll see you then. God bless and God bless. You.